Um, our second talk today is from uh, Mona Hajami, who's from the University of Bath. Uh, she's going to be talking about her bioenterprise work, and she's also got one of her students to give his perspective as well. So, uh, Mona, if you'd like to, to jump in whenever you're ready. Thank you very much, Nigel, and thank you, Catherine, as well. That was a really interesting talk and something I think that we do, or quite a few of us do, probably in departments. But interesting to see different ways of doing it across other universities. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, I presume. Okay, so the example I'm using is of bioenterprise now, which is essentially a little more about, uh, before we start, I just wanted to differentiate or rather actually say that there's not much of a difference between enterprise and entrepreneurship in the sense one is talking about application, but the other one could also apply to the theory of entrepreneurship. But this is the QAA definition of what enterprise means, which is the application and generation of ideas versus behaviors, which is the entrepreneurship. But both of them apply to higher education in particular. So uh, the reason I wanted to bring this in was it sort of links into a lot of the graduate attributes that we talked about earlier. Uh, as well as across the wider debaters, bringing in an opportunity. So this was what I was talking about, was the difference between enterprise and entrepreneurship, and also the graduate attributes of enterprise, uh, creativity, originality, that's an opportunity to develop those skills. I also offered some perspectives on benefits from the student point of view and from the staff point of view, why that links to career aspirations for students. It's a low risk taster of what is involved and it's an opportunity for a student to get involved with something that's happening at the departmental level. And for staff, of course, to have a partnership with students, it's an opportunity for a student to address or be part of a solution, which could be a local solution or a global solution. It's also a good way of trying out something that hasn't been tried out before. And most important, it's also a good use of resources. There's not as much uh, requirement for space in labs and time spent, etc. cetera. Uh, this was the project timeline I talked about where it's a semester one or semester two, but usually what I do is have a meeting with all my students and then discuss what their career aspirations are and work back from the deadline of submission into a timeline of what milestones we need to achieve by when. It helps to focus their progress as we go along and motivation too. And I also wanted to say that the assessment criteria is the same, whether it's wet labs or dry labs, it applies to all our projects in Bath. And this was the criteria. We have a separate criteria for performance and for the written report. And this applies again to all projects. And you can see the, in performance, it's organization, prof professionalism, ability, contribution, independence, communication, and instead of a lab record, they have an activities log where they have to record what they've been doing. And on the written side, instead of introduction materials, methods, results, and discussion, we have a slightly uh, variant, which takes into account the same sort of model. Now I'm going rushing through this. So the types of bioenterprise projects that I was going to show some examples of, they could include proof of concept startups or product uh, processing or identification and development, or it could be social enterprise, something for the greater good of the society or community too. So some examples are uh, BioCage, which is very medically relevant and actually it was related to the influenza virus. A student came up with the idea of how could you contain it within a sort of silica base. Another more interesting and wackier idea was Illumimi, Illumimi blooms where a student said, um, why not put a green fluorescent protein or fluorescent proteins within 
flowers. So you'll have flowers that will light up in the night. So that was the more interesting angle. There was another one which was more related to uh, ecocentric development of the use or recycling of plastics, specific types of PHA plastics. And again, in all these cases, it was the student who came up with the idea themselves. And this was based on all the lectures and content that they had received, either through uh, the degree itself or in Bath, we have a placement uh, option. So a lot of the students who choose to do these modules tend to be students who've had some experience of working in industri uh, industrial environments before for, for a year or so. But I wanted to end with uh, this example of a social enterprise project, which Joe did this year. Uh, Joe is, I'm hoping Joe is around and can hear this, but Joe, this project was something he thought of based on his own experience of having lived in Nigeria for a while. And he identified this need for um, a safer source of drinking water in parts of rural Nigeria. And uh, this was again something I would have no idea or experience or expertise in. So it was essentially I was, all, my, all I did was give him some guidance on a regular basis on who are the people he should be thinking about contacting, what are the resources he could use potentially in developing this idea forward. So I will pass it on to Joe if he is around. Joe, are you there? Yes, can everyone hear me? Brilliant, thank you. Cheers, Joe. Um, I don't have a lot to say. Um, just a few key things I do want to mention about this type of project. So. Uh, firstly, why it appealed to me. I think I've known for a very long time, probably since my first year at uni, that I don't actually want any career to do with uh, lab-based work. Um, a way I was trying to get away from science for a bit as well. Um, so doing this project is, I found it really good because I can explore that kind of new field that I've not, that's not typically covered in the scope of my degree. Um, so I would really advocate for this type of project because I think it's really good. Uh, what did I learn from it? I think I share a lot of what Kira said about her project. I shared that with this. Um, one thing I would pick up on is the time management skills that you get from this type of project. Just comparing with my housemate who did a lab-based project, hers felt very more structured, like everything was done for her. because she, she could only be in the labs for certain amounts of time and she had to be there with a PhD student. Um, so it's very structured for her, but for me it was very much on my terms. I had to do it off my own back. I would have weekly meetings with Momna just to update her, just to see how my progress was going, but everything else was on me. Um, so that's uh, quite a big thing that I would take from this type of project. Um, and then kind of the future directions that it's given me. Before doing this project, I did my placement year actually in finance. Um, and I thought, I'm going into finance, I'm just gonna go get an office job, just step away from science forever and that will be me done. Um, but after doing this project, it's kind of shifted my whole career path because now I'm looking into doing my masters in water science policy and management. Um, so that's kind of how this project has shaped my future prospects. Um, that's kind of really all I had to say about this type of project. I'm not sure if Mum wants to add anything or if anyone has questions. I'm trying to locate the questions, Q. <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you very much both. Um, the, the main question we've actually had is about the, the log books you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Could you expand on how you use them? Is it through a blog or, or something like that? And David in particular is interested because they're going to be doing this for their MSc in a few weeks. So we really like to know how you actually manage that. Yeah, so uh, students have give, uh, been given uh, sort of instructions on submitting an activity log. And what I tell my students is I to have a weekly log of what they've been doing, including the meetings with me, but more importantly, what have they taken away from the meetings? What have been thinking about things to work on, things that haven't worked, or if they've reached a barrier what are they doing about it? So it, 
we try to keep it as uh, not, it's not a reflective portfolio. It's not a fa more than a certain amount of words, but it's more like a very much like a timetable almost of what the, a record of meetings, their thinking and what they've learned from it. Okay, great. Uh, Ian's asked about uh, the social enterprise aspects. Are the um, sustainable development goals aligned? So are local businesses involved in any capacity, uh, sort of Dragon's Den based pitches, assessments, et cetera, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's the way we are moving forward at, at a university level, actually, where we are getting our local uh, councils coming in, identifying what are the areas that they have uh, problems with and where they need some uh, you know, student input on. And that's happening at a university level with the local councils. So that's on a sort of link with the cities that we live in. And the second level is also from our industrial partners where they have an industry partnership project where they come in and pitch that they have these problems and they need some solutions for and then interdisciplinary teams to come together to work on that project. That's really interesting. How, how long does that actually take to set up in terms of those links? So at the stage, it's done very much at a departmental level. And again, this links with existing partnerships with industry. So we have the placement providers, for instance, as well as look links with local uh, organizations uh, such as uh, you know, with the healthcare hospitals, etc. And so if they have something particular, they put it as part of a pitch and that pitch is then selected centrally and sent down to departmental level. Okay. Uh, we've had a question about the format of the, the final assessment dissertation. Is it like a report or a project plan uh, or is it something a little bit different? Yeah, it's like a standard project uh, outline, uh, you know, in this case, it's not an introduction, materials, methods, results, and discussion, but it's more about uh, what were the, what's the need, what is the problem identified, what is the background, what is the research that goes on behind it. And there's a lot of policy documents and government regulations uh, that form part of this. And then identifying the problem and then going into a solution of what that problem could be. I don't know if, Joe, you want to add to this. Um, on yeah. the outline of the project uh, writer report. So it, it isn't your standard science uh, report. It doesn't, like Mama said, it doesn't have the introduction and results and discussion. Um, it's kind of my project in particular is more a um, what is the issue with water management in rural Nigeria kind of explored uh, key factors as to why people don't have that access to a safe drinking water source. Um, and then it looked at what they are currently using, which is um, sachet water, which is literally a 500 mil plastic bag of water. Um, but it gets very dirty and can pass infections very easily. Um, so my kind of conclusion of my report was this new design of sachet water and how it could be brought uh, into like a manufacturing process, how much that would cost, um, how is that going to then affect these rural Nigerians. Um, so it's more kind of a discuss. I would say the whole paper is a discussion of issues and then coming up with your own solutions at the end of it. Can I just ask you as well, in terms of having done a project like this, what's your perspective in terms of going into the job market? Do you feel that people will look at the project you've done and say, well, you haven't done a lab project or are you able to highlight the skills that you find more applicable? Um, well, I think it depends what, again, you want, what kind of job you want, because I'm not applying to any lab jobs. So I don't think people are particularly fussed about the fact that I've not done a lab based project. Um, if anything, in my career, it's good. I, I think it will be somewhat of a benefit because I've focused on more of like a holistic approach to a problem instead of um, sometimes in the labs, you get very refined and very narrow viewed on some of your work. But I think this is a much more holistic like wide angled view on everything um so i think if i was applying to a lab-based job i think it might play a disadvantage but because i'm not i think uh it doesn't really disadvantage me it's a bit of a devil's advocate question there but that's really good yeah. to hear from your perspective um are there any more questions for either mom or joe don't 
doesn't look like it. Uh, in that case, I'd just like to say thank you very much to, to both of you. Again, it's really, really good to hear the student perspective as well as the academics perspective. So thank you for giving your time up this afternoon to actually come in. We, we have actually had a couple of questions that come in. Really? So, okay, well, I've been, yeah. I've, been, I've been busy looking at the screen, not the chat on this instance. So, so now, if you've got yeah. those. So there was a, a question from, from Joe about what um, the assessment for this looks like, as opposed to just uh, the project write-up. So probably this is for, for both Mona and Catherine. Um, what else are they doing? Are they doing posters, um, three-minute theses, Dragon's Den, co-creation? Is it, is it just a write-up, or is there, are there other assessment components as well that they have to satisfy? Great. Moment, is there anything Yeah, I was just going to say that we are slightly constrained by the breadth of assessments we can apply to these sort of projects mainly because of parity with the wet lab projects. We do have those, all the Dragon's Den, uh, three minute thesis, et cetera, in other modules, but not for a project module, very much relying on communication skills, written and verbal and performance as three main criteria, really. I think uh, I, we, I, there was something about RSP. I vaguely remember saying that there were some constraints on how we can do this breadth of assessments for projects, but I may be wrong on this. Anyone, I would love to hear from anyone else if they have RSV accreditation based on the wide variety of assessments. Uh, we, um, in our assessment, we have RSV accreditation do non-lab projects such as this, and so we wrote our assessment criteria to cover both wet labs and dry labs and so we talk about gains in knowledge and appropriate analysis of data sets and appropriate yeah. um, interpretation of the data sets acquired so we did we, we phrased it in those ways that the terminology wasn't so tight and it, which would allow us to carry out other projects and we basically have the caveat as long as you're creating some knowledge or analyzing some data you're you're going along the right lines so that was why i was saying you know with the dragon's den if we did something like or a three minute thesis pitch i yeah can we get away with i guess it's what you tell the students and how it's done we uh, we also had a question for joe as well so how did you actually come up with the the idea for your project um so my first meeting with momna uh, we sat down and just discussed what I'd done in my placement year and I'd worked at Unilever and they were on a big thing about how um, they're reducing their plastic and plastic in the environment and everything and so we actually started down that route I think it was about two weeks in or one and a half weeks in I decided I actually hated it and I really have no interest in going into that kind of uh, research type field um, so we kind of reevaluated and we said, cool, what other issues am I interested in? Uh, we looked at the United Nations, the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, and I chose water. Um, everyone should have clean access, uh, safe access to water. Um, and then because I lived in Nigeria when I was younger, to me it was kind of this obvious link of, oh, well, I know so many people in Nigeria don't have access uh, to a clean uh, source of water so then that was kind of how I made that link of rural Nigerians and their water supply and then it kind of just took from there okay that's great thank you it's really interesting to hear about how you come up with these things as well